Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Assange. Assange. What the heck? Man, they dug him up, didn't they? Oh my gosh, they ripped Van Whoa. Winkled him. Whoa. They ripped Van Winkled. I mean, he was like, they Julian just woke him Assange up. Assange got awoken. Middle of the night. Mm. Ecuador. Sure. I don't even know how that works. You know, it's, it's a flag on the door for Ecuador. Obviously, it's some form of em- embassy. Right. In, uh, but it looks like an NBC Suites. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be real with you. Where he was, or where? The- y- y- yeah, okay. where it's just like there was pictures of him on the balcony before. And sure. Do you remember when Pamela Anderson was over there? Yeah, I thought they were dating. I, I don't know what they were doing. And then I saw that face, and I go, Pamela. Yeah, but he, here's here's the thing. She had a good run. She had a really strong run. And how do you mean? What are we going into now? Ooh, physically. Um, oh, what are we? So what are we saying? What are we saying? No I'm, more. I, no, no, no. I'm, it's, it's the opposite. Not age. Not age, right? I'm saying probably the drug use has worn her down a little bit. And, you know, it's that, tough. Sh- it's tough to do as a... Look, as a woman, you've always said this on the show, right? Age is your enemy. And that's the... Oh, uh, well... Particularly uh, white blonde women, right? Right. right. Uh, we age, you know, dog years. No, the other way. <laughs> What's the opposite of dog years? So for every year we age five. Uh, dog years is seven. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so dog, <laughs> so dog years. Yeah. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 So with yeah. that, you're on a you're, you're on a timeline, anyways, and then you add so, you add coke cocaine use for you know a good twenty years to that. Mix. It's exactly like that when you go, oh, the dog's fourteen. Oh, he's fourteen yeah. years old, and he's yeah. like, huh? <laughs> That's like the white women. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So you're saying perfect match. You're saying. Well, I'm I'm saying for, actually for him for for Assange, uh-huh. right? And I'm going straight Assange here. You're stuck in this Ecuadorian thing. To be fair, though, it does look like a hotel room. So, eh, it could be worse. If you're on the run from the law and you're stuck in a hotel room in London mm-hmm. and you can, you know, Uber Eats and mm-hmm. uh, do all that stuff to your house. Sure. Because he was able to answer the door and, like, receive packages and talk to people and stuff. Um, you know, not, not terrible. Not terrible. Then you add on top of it, you know, uh, an aging Pamela Anderson to the mix. Sure. That'll play. That'll play well, maybe at, he was, at the embassy suites. He was so out of touch. <laughs> That he goes, you know who I'd really want right now? <laughs> My dream girl. My dream girl. Bring me Pamela Anderson and Jenny McCarthy. <laughs> and they show up. Ha! Right? Jenny McCarthy's like, ha, huh, huh. ha. Frozen uh, in time. And Pamela's like saggy Batman sort yeah. of deal. Yeah. Uh, or saggy Pamela, really. Saggy Pam. Sa- saggy Pam. I, look, I'm going to be realsies, though. All right. So, so breaking this down here. I think Assange is probably doing pretty pretty good for himself. Probably doing okay for himself there. If you're banging Pamela Anderson, age or not age, I think he's lucky to be having sex with anyone in that place, right? Right. There is a novelty, though, of sleeping with a criminal. Like a world-renowned criminal. Oh, for Pam, I think it was great. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah. And I think she got caught up in the magic of that. Oh. Of like, oh, man. She got all this brilliant. Yeah. yeah. She knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. Because the, the, and the reason why I bring this up was after he got arrested, the, the, the coverage somehow shifted to her and what she said. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote this for, really? verbatim. Yeah. I, cause I, I didn't even think that was a thing still. But I didn't ahead. either. And then, like, they cut to her, and uh, she's, she was angry about it and distraught and all this stuff. And then her exact quote was, UK is now America's bitch. And I was like, huh. Sorry, that was a quote on... Yep. That was a quote. Yeah. From, the UK... Pamela Anderson. The UK is now America's bitch. Yes. And 
The reason being is he's going to be extradited back here with you know United States charges for computer hacking. So they're going to bring him over here. Okay. But he had a good run of seven years in this pl- seven years over there. Right. Before they drug him out. If you haven't seen the footage uh, by now. It's awesome. It's a cross between David Letterman, mm-hmm. current David Letterman mm-hmm. with, the, with the gigantic white beard. And also I'm going to throw in a little bit of. Uh, Saddam Hussein Like the disheveledness of it Of like the shock sure. of like Oh oh, Sure You know yeah. like, like that, that real uh, Glassed over eyes Where you know the, the, the glassy eyes Of just like oh I was not expecting this I was not expecting this yeah. uh, the, You would have bring me soup this late And then like a little bit of old man Cockleberry kind yeah. of thing Like old man well, the, old, like the old the guy down the street, the right. old man like on a, the like a Boo Radley type, sure, stitch. like a Boot Brown. Yeah, yep. Don't know who Boot Brown is, but uh, maybe a Boo this Radley. My, uh, <laughs> this is my nickname in high school. Was it really old Boot Brown? Old they used Boot to Brown call me. Is here. Yep. I was um, super popular. <laughs> I bet Boot Brown. I bet you were. Here she comes, old Boot Brown. Old Boot Brown, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Boot Brown. It was like a fun, fun, flirty, like sexy it's nickname. Sa- it, that sounds like a name that would be added as a feature on the, like the, the next Lil Nas X song, like Lil Nas X featuring Boot Brown. Boot Brown, yeah. Well, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town time to the Boot Brown Road. I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, and yeah. then find her, and then it's you. And you're, you know, t- tipping a cowgirl uh-huh. hat. Yeah. Very JBR. Very John Benet Ramsey. Yes. Um, I'll have you know, that exact little, outfit. The little, uh, little cowboy outfit that they mm-hmm. always show. Um, but yeah, so look, seven years, you're stuck in, in, this, in uh, NBC Suites, right? Sure. Take me to prison. You know what I'm saying? No. I, look, this, <laughs> this, this looked great, actually. His whole stitch looked great. Problem is this. You can't work out. It's not like they put a, you know, an LA fitness in there. It's not like your gym membership. They're going to let you out of the gates to go work out. Yeah, but you can get jacked in prison, so. Just exactly. A hundred percent. So like, but you're, this guy's, he appears to he's be. He's not doing 50s. isogenics. Yeah. No, he's not doing. He's not doing. Sorry. Calisthenics. No. And I, I, could he have ordered a Peloton? Maybe. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Because they could have brought that to him. Like. Great, put a Peloton in it. And it's like, hey, you're no longer oh. in, in UK. You're, you know, working out with somebody in New York. That's got to be their next ad. Like a Jillian. It's just Assange, like. Yeah, just on the, on the Peloton. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, if you were spilling illegal USA government oh. secrets, would you still like to work out while you're in an Ecuadorian? You hear me, Peloton? Embassy? Great. You hear me, Peloton? Peloton is here. Give me one and then do this ad. Yeah. You hear me, Peloton? For Assange. Assange. Yeah, when I saw this, man, I, uh, I, I look, it was shocking. I, I He was one of those guys to me that I thought would have stayed for like 15 years or, you know, never would have got out. Because now the, the attention turns to Snowden. You know? Right. Because uh, there's a few of them out there. Chelsea Manning's back in prison. So you got that leaker, you know, that little <laughs> leaker. How did that happen? Some other loophole in the law and got him, you know, got him back in got there. I'm not, I'm not going to call, call him her, but uh, uh, I'm just not. Um, but he's, so he's in prison. Okay. Uh, Assange is now in prison. Uh, Snowden's the only one left. And, and his quote was, you know, it's a, a dark moment for freedom. Eh, you were stealing government secrets. Like, I don't, I don't really know how that works, to be real. Yeah. Real he's with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, n- nor do I care. I mean, I, I just, you know, if you're going to do shit like that, you know the risk. Yeah. And you like, yeah. So they've always known and they've always kind of played with it. Yeah. You know, I, you Walk know, the line, I, I'll go to jail for this. Like, yeah. Like the, look, the WikiLeaks think was, it was cool, I guess, but, um, you know, I, not, it's not a to me. It's just like, eh, all right, cool. It's another story. Like we're hacked. You know, people got hacked. I feel like when this happened, it was a big deal, and you were always getting information. So much has changed in seven years since he started doing this that it's like, eh, all right, great, another data breach. Who cares? I expect it. Dead serious. You know, I hate a leak though, too, right? You do. 
you do hate a leak, but you know, I I hate information getting leaked. Yeah. No, you you don't care at all. No, it's just it's like giving it's like giving the plans of a house, right? To yeah. your gardener. Yeah. No offense. Sure. It's not a race thing. No, not at all. To your babysitter, whoever. Nobody to knew. Your, by the way, nobody knew what race your gardener was. When I just got to your maid, right? To your nail tech. <clears throat> you know what I mean? No race. Yeah. I'm yeah. not talking about race. Nope. Not at all. The person that does my nails in my yard and cleans my house. Ah, uh, no need to go there anymore. Just saying. Yep. You give the plans to the house. You give what you get. Yeah. And you go, I leaked it to you, right? <laughs> and they're like, oh, they like got it, but they don't know how to read it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Plant. You know what I'm saying? No, nothing. Nothing like that. So here's how the WikiLeaks works. <laughs> right. Uh, he stole emails and information uh, and then gave them out to everybody and then everybody could read the emails and stuff. So. Yeah. But out of context. Yep. And without. Nah, anyway. No, you bet. I. I'm telling you how I feel about leaks. <laughs> this is how I feel about it. I, I just. I, con- I completely trust. The government. Again, in the seven years. I'm going to let them do what they want to do. In the seven years that, that all this has been going on, right? Uh, so much has changed with data breaches that it is not. I don't think it's interesting or exciting for anybody anymore. Uh, the, you know, the Snowden thing. Remember he had a movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt was as Snowden. And they were like, oh, man, this is going to be rad. No, I, nobody watched it. Bombs. Nobody cares. No. Um, you know, today it, it came out that Amazon workers, right? are listening to what you tell Alexa. Huge shock. Huge, huge shock. I told, Please do. Remember when one of my best friends was the first one to get Alexa and we were over at their house? Yeah. And it just started tripping out like mm-hmm. in the middle of a podcast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yep, uh, that thing's recording everything we say and do and everything you do. And he's like, no. And I'm like, yeah. So now here's, here's the deal. This is, this is what leaked. Another leak, again, which is why it's not a big deal anymore. I don't want the leak. Of what happened to Assange. You're going to get it, uh, Jabes. I'm I don't s- like a leak. Sorry. So it, it, it got leaked that Amazon is employing thousands of people around the world to help improve, is what they're saying, uh, Alexa and those, those fucking Echo speakers, um, that they listen to voice recordings uh, captured at the homes and the offices. The recordings are then transcribed annotated and then fed back into the software as an elimin- like as an a, an effort to eliminate gaps in Alexa's understanding of human speech and help it better respond to commands. Sure. If that is your excuse that you want to run, let's let's call a spade a spade here. They're recording everything you say because mm-hmm. they want to sell you more shit. That's it at the end of the day. Sure. Um if you're not, you know, if you're not using your, your refrigerator correctly, you're going to get an ad the next day mm-hmm. if you're talking about it in your house. Yeah. Uh, so Please do. Yeah, somewhere else. Uh, somebody else said that to me. What? Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Oh. Uh, but, but, you know, look, if you're boning, they could send you some sexual products, like everything, you know? Look. Uh, and- what? No, please do. Go ahead. Yeah. So- uh, please send me stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the camp of, like, listen to me if you want. You're right. That's what so send me stuff. My one my best friends, Dan, he said that. He said yeah. that to me. He goes, dude, I, I, I actually love it because you know, I forget that I'm out of things or I forget that I'm doing oh. things. And he goes, So most of the ads that pop up are great because it's things that I want or talk about, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's just too creepy for me. Why? I, I'd like some form of privacy in my life. You don't you don't have any. I know I don't have any. Oh, and no and you haven't for a really long time. I, listening I, I, or not I, I understand that. oh okay so I like at least the illusion that's it you need I'm, to, I'm one you of those need to people... open your eyes and you need to wake up is what it is <laughs> I've gotten a lot of messages about this you always say that we've gotten a lot of messages we have I know I know we but do. we've gotten a lot of messages about you need to wake up open your eyes is that real no God. I don't get it I get two messages a month. We do. Well, we get to. We you get, get to the, the messages. Well, yeah. I get my own messages. Yeah. I, we run the the Ross Patterson Revolution Facebook but page. No, and Instagram but no, uh, but so. yeah, you need to open your eyes. Yeah, no, I will. And you need to let go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
you need to let go of it. Everybody does. And you cannot <laughs> fight it. So the robots have fully taken over in your mind. They and when when they say they're working on the response time and gaps and things, right. um, they are. I think they're working on what what responses like they're grooming it to be a full on robot uh, that you can talk to and that yeah. will have um, responses that are very dialogue, very normal dialogue. Sure, but you have to, you know, with those weird robots with the bald head. Yeah. Ladies, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you yeah. have to work with them for a long time. So it's like yeah. recording, responding, yep. switching things, blah blah blah. You know this. Um, and the I sooner know. that everybody Ugh. just eases into it, the sooner <laughs> they can all kill us and we can be done with this. Now, listen, <laughs> we do not have the Alexa, we don't. I refuse uh, to we get don't it. have the echo. We How, refused, however, and I'm I'm cool I, with that at this point. At some point, I'm going to get it. Here, so, but here's the thing: we do have so Dish, yeah, TV swapped that's out the remote. We'll go, yeah, and that's it's got to you know speak into this thing and all this shit. Like I know those remotes are recording us like the whole time. Yeah, so it'll light up like when we're talking and stuff. Like they're they're recording <laughs> us the whole time. Um, and again, fine with it. Uh, I'm not like, so yesterday, right? Take, for example, uh, I go to Facebook, you know, as I usually do, cause we got, we got these two shows, um, you know, and, and everything else that's going on books and, and movies sure. and all that stuff. And like, I probably check Facebook, check in, you know, five, 10 times a day, w- whatever. Right. Yesterday I go to check in and they were like, Hey, we need your, your page has too many, too many likes, too many followers. Right. So we're going to need. Two step authentic- authentication on this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, You didn't do it, right? I'm like, uh, no, You can't. I couldn't. I was locked out. Yeah, you can't. Don't, don't, don't. No, yeah. I, we were locked out. We were locked out of all of Facebook. Okay. So I was like, Great. What is the two step authentication? Mm-hmm. They want your phone number now. Oh, yeah. So Facebook wants your phone number now. On top of everything else they have, mm-hmm. now they want your phone number. And, and here's how they do it. So here's how they get around it. They ask for your phone number and they say, all right, great. To get back in, we're going to have to send you a text. Mm-hmm. So what that's saying is I can't even put in a fake number anymore mm-hmm. because if I don't put in the real number and I don't, you know, oh, there's a five digit code we're going to give you and then you can verify this and type it back in. We just want to make sure that you're safe. No, that's not what the fuck it is. Here, you, you want my, my phone number on top of everything else in my goddamn life is what yeah. you want. Yeah. Now you have it because yeah. I, don't, I don't have a choice. Drinking Bros page is like 60,000 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, my page is 20 something thousand people and all this. And I'm like, I don't have a choice. Right. You know, uh, now they have my phone number. Now they have because I, I probably get and I don't know if you, you do. I get like on average three robo calls a day, three to four. I'd say I'm I'm two to three right now. Okay, but um, well, hey, you're. Getting but I there. give I give my number out. Do you really? Oh, emails. Um, you know, and a, furn- a new furniture site I'm looking at. I mean, I give it <laughs> out. Because Why is that? as I've told, because I've given in. Oh, geez. I've given in. What's the worst thing that can happen? I get a robo call. You know what I'm saying? So whatever they're good. They won't let me into, into the site, into Facebook, whatever, without it. Right. It's the world we live in. (laughs) And as soon as you get on board, open up your eyes and wake up. (laughs) Maybe we could get that couch. I was wanting. Yeah. James is coming with (laughs) hot takes today. Kids, the hot takes. No, I need, I need to get as comfortable with this, all of this shit Uh as, as Jude law is comfortable with losing his hair. I, that's how comfortable I need to become with all of this. I, when I saw the picture of him yesterday on Twitter, like he's shooting the new Pope, by the way, which yeah. we, we love that show on oh. HBO. Oh yeah. It was the, uh, what, what was it called before the young Pope? Yeah. Now, now it's called the new Pope. Cause they're coming back. Got it. Whatever oh. years later, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm sure there was some legal dispute and they had to change the name, but whatever. Yeah, but they might every season. They'll make it. Ah, Whatever. What is it? New Pope? Still a young Pope, a young sexy Pope. Next season will be old Pope. Yeah. Like if you said, hey, Ross, instead of like Benicio del Toro, I'll get down on a Jude Law. Like that I could understand. 
He was in Are a... Are you telling me you don't understand Benicio? Watch fucking Traffic and come back at me. I will. That was 20 years ago. That's doesn't like me matter. saying watch... Doesn't matter. It's not going to happen. Watch, you know, Raging Bull, you know, and come back at me with De Niro. Like, no, it was fucking 50 years ago. Like, let's get over this. Um, because of that, <laughs> oh. that era, because of that, I'll take it however I can get it. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna turn it's around like, on you. It's like it's like a Sanj. It's like a Sanj and Pamela like Anderson. The guy who Wahlberg. It's like Donnie with Jenny McCarthy. I, In his mind, she's on singled out, right? Yep. And so he he'll take it however he can get it. Yes. It's, and that's how I feel about Benice. And 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 that's how Sanj feels about Pamela Anderson. I know to, that. That's to, what I told to you. To him, she might as well have showed up at that, that Ecuadorian embassy suites with a fucking Baywatch bathing suit Barb on. Barbed wire. Yeah. The barbed wire suit. Oh, oh. Good luck. Good night. Yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> but Benice, like, oof, you know. Look, I, I, hey, he was just in uh, Escape at Danamora. It was. It was. I'd take it. You take him. Oh, okay. I take that right. bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colored up. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Rimmers for Benicio. If you haven't seen that episode, go back and. But listen what are we to talking it. about? Jude Law. So listen, is I'm he so, really so, balding, or is it just a weird hairline he's always had? Is that it's a weird hairline, but it keeps going back okay. in the same widow's peak, which is amazing. And like he, he's comfortable in it. Like. Usually you go B coops with it, right? You start to fill it in. You go Jeremy Piven with sure. it. Sure. You start to fill it in. That uh, high quality Bosley. Yeah, and if you're, by the way, if you're a dude out there in this life, because I know hair is a big thing for all of us dudes, right? Um, that's just one thing that every man. Listen, women too. Well, there's not a lot of balding women. Let's face it. Yeah, men, it's 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 a pretty high percentage, right? Okay. Okay. So for a man going bald, right? You know. You see a guy like Jude Law, that's a power move right there where you're just like, no, nah, fuck it, I'm good. He rolls out in a white, a little tiny white Speedo and whatever scene they're shooting for this, this you know, this mm -hmm. new Pope. But he had a tube. Hair slicked back. He had a tube. What do you mean? That's a tube. That's a no, tube. No, you think yeah. he's bald? Not totally, but so for the Pope, he has a tube. And it's, it's just, it's the same kind of thing, but it's like, it, it makes it like a comb over this way. You'll see it next time you see this. Wow. But in real life. Right. He has this little Patch. tuft yeah, 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 in yeah. the front and then it's kind of a balding uh, okay. hairline that goes back, but he's always had this tuft right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they do for the Pope, yeah. the new Pope, is it's a tube, but it's, it's like a... A receding hairline tube, you'll you'll see it. Yeah, for by the way, for any men at home, and I'm I'm gonna point right in the camera, subscribe on YouTube to the video show. Um there's a great episode with Dax Shepard on his podcast, uh, with Ashton Kutcher talking about losing your hair and how mm -hmm. they got they both got used to get injections for years, sure. like right around the front. Yeah. And it was one of the like for, for dudes who are balding and you're listening to it, you're like, Oh shit. Way to go, man. Like, I was surprised two people of that stature would have a conversation like that. We had one on Drinking Bros about coloring up. Right, right. You know, for dudes where you're just like, all right, cool, man. You know, if you have a younger looking face, you should color up and all that other stuff. And like, they were talking about the injections the you get for the hair. The of podcasts is like, they would never say that on a TV interview. No. But on a nope. podcast, you can get, and you have to get yeah. real conversations yeah. like that. Absolutely. So, but what he eventually was like, dude, I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Kutch was just like, I'm just going for it. Yeah. I, you know? I, and I think that's the way it is. Like, um, and with, with Jude Law, I didn't know that was a tube. That's a, that was a, it's that's a, a tube surprise in the tube. show. Yeah, it's a tube in the show, but the fact that he needs to tube. Yeah. And I mean toupee. But the fact that he needs uh, to they tube. Know. They know. People know. Look. <laughs> Uh, is it, you know, he is, he is balding. There's lots of pictures of just the thin receding, the tuft in the front, but he's always just kind of gone with it and been like, fuck you. I'm still, I'm still fucking the nanny. Right. Um, who was it? Who was he with? I forget. You know, I, Sierra it, something, C Selena something, <laughs> Sienna Sierra something. Sierra missed. 
I don't know. Sierra Mist, yes. Sienna Miller, is that what you're talking about? Sienna Miller. Is he was he Is it Sienna Miller? I don't think he was cheating on Sienna Miller. Oh, that's the that's the famous thing. She was the nanny? No, she wasn't the nanny. Ah. Oh no, you're right. He was banging Sienna Miller, but he was married to somebody else. He was married to someone else, yeah. divorced, then banging her. Right, right, right. And while he was yeah. with Sienna, I mean, this was a full on relationship, yeah. years long relationship. I get while it. he was with arguably one of the hottest women <laughs> in the world, he's banging the nanny who is meh. No. Yeah. Meh. My, my guess is they probably had an, a little bit of an open relationship and it was one of those, uh, look, I've got to be in the room type stitches. And then he probably no. know, was banging her without her being in the room. Nope. You know, I that think was the Spice the- Girls. That was her thing. Which Spice Girl? Uh, scary Spice. So she's going through a, black a, a one. nasty divorce. Yeah, the black one. It's all right. Um, the black one. Yeah. Uh, they're going through a nasty divorce now. And it, it was over. He was banging the nanny. But they've all been collectively having sex for years. He started banging her out when, when Scary Spice wasn't home. Oh, so it was a thruple. Thruple, yeah. That he went, he went couple. Yes. But it wasn't like they were together. Gosh, ne- gosh I did, you would never think that would happen, huh? Which, God, that was with a thruple. You would, that's the last thing you would think. I know, but that if you one would couple up, if you look at that dude, I just, bro, you're married to Scary Spice at that point, and and she's letting you fuck the nanny in the bedroom. Like, how do you fuck that up? Here's what the real deal is, and that's what the Jude Law thing will teach you. What the Scary Spice thing will teach you is, uh, it doesn't matter how hot you are. How cool you are, how awesome you are, how whatever. Yeah, fun, flirty. How fun, flirty. If there is a window of opportunity, um, whether it be nanny, maid, uh, thruple. Yeah, hiker. A man will take it. Yeah, a rock climbing teacher at REI. And what's the, sure. Yeah. And what's the uh, a frame a framist a framer at Hobby Lobby? You know it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've never had a hot framer at Hobby Lobby like ever. There's a cuter. No. There's a cuter dreaded framer. I, that's what I'm talking about. I, she's not cute. That's too much for me. What if I did dreads? No. No. But like nice ones. No, but it's, like you to- know what it is? Because it's the grow process. So you've got to get through, what, the first 30 days? And that's disgusting. Of what? No, you dreads. can get them done professionally. I worked at a place in LA where they'll do them all, make them nice that day. Really? So you've got kind of, that's yeah. like the fashion dread. If you wanted to give it a go, that'd be fine. I just don't want the stinky part of it. No, I mean. Because we all know those girls who are like, oh, yeah, man, I'm it wouldn't dreads. be like that. Sorry, I stink. I'm in a It'd transition like full of growing makeup, dreads. And you're like, eh, full eh. makeup, pretty, yeah. but with, um, with, uh, with a nice dread. Yeah, I, I could get down on that. As okay. long as it wasn't, you know, you didn't stink. What was I talking about? Oh, and also the, the last thing I'm going to say about the Jula nanny thing or whatever is what is the saying? Um, Find me like a hot woman and, and yeah, I'll... Find, find me the hottest girl in the world and I'll, I'll show you a guy who's tired of fucking her. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. I right? just think in that situation, you know, I, I think it, uh, the, the man has to be honest with himself about of like what he looks like as a person. Oh, you're talking about hair now. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. I, no. I'm not talking about hair. I'm talking about in the, uh, the, the Belafonte, the guy that was married to scary spice, right? Okay. Not an attractive dude. Not um, an attractive? No. Oh, not an attractive. Uh, had a, you know, a famous father. Um, but him, okay. not an attractive dude. You've got to at some point say, man, I am, I am really lucky to be at this dance with you. And how can I not fuck this up? That's, that's, what, I, that's what I find hard. Because that's the advice I give to, to dudes all the time, right? Uh, people who come up to me and say, I don't understand, man. You and, you and Jesse have this amazing relationship and you know, she's so we lucky don't. to be with you and yeah. everything, you know, we don't uh, No, not at yeah. all. Um, it's a business relationship at this point, but they were like, how do you, how do you guys keep it together? And how are you awesome? <laughs> you and I was just alive. like, you know why we got married in our, in our thirties. That's why. <laughs> how do you keep the spark alive? And it's true. But you, you, you got married in your thirties where, you know, yeah. fuck like the, the rest of them. And I, and I said, and they were like, Oh man, should I wait till 30? And I'll look at them and be like, uh, you're, if you're kind of balding, no, you shouldn't. You got to grab, you gotta, you gotta grab. It's musical chairs at that point. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. Unless you want to go, you know, shave, shave it up. Even that's a tough one, though, because that exposes your age to the world. It makes you look a l- little older. Uh, it makes you look more mature. Sure. Um, you know. Sure. Uh, but that's it, it's a look, but you're not getting the, the younger ass anymore. So you have to separate yourself mentally from that of like, all right, if I go shaved head, I'm 28 plus, right? I'm not and on the, all this. I'm not on the younger. I'm not picking the younger girls on The Bachelor anymore. Mm-hmm. I got to find those 28 pluses, 28 to 30 to crowd you know what i'm saying and all this goes away if you're rich <clears throat> so it's all of it so it doesn't the balding then yep don't worry about it so and that that was the last piece of advice of the only way to beat all of this hair color balding age all of it weight weight even is to be rich as to fuck rich, and we're famous yeah. rich or super famous you because you look at assange right not rich but really fucking famous mm-hmm. and he had a cool and, and um dangerous cool, yeah dangerous so you can be famous and dangerous and that's cool um you know you look at that remember the hot prisoner remember that that yeah. guy for a while who was yeah. viral did you see what he turned that into what he turned it into uh, what what a what? masterpiece that guy should be teaching courses at fucking stanford um for real of just how to what what you do when you get a little bit of fame and mm. you're super poor mm-hmm and you get a you were the hot inmate. That's what you're known as online. He is married with a child now. Got divorced to the the wife that he was with. Right? Cheated yeah. on her. Cheated on her with someone a little more famous. No, she's oh. a an heiress to some fortune, oh. like a you know, kind of like a Heinz family or whatever. But it's overseas, right? Smart. Some royalty thing mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Knocked her up as fast as he could. Had a kid. Locked in. And I mean, dude, he, I, I saw him carrying bags out of Gucci, like on, on, on these pictures. And I was like, oh my God, like in, you know, <laughs> right on, what's that famous street in London with all the shopping? In London? Yeah. You've been there for a while, right? <laughs> nah, no idea. Um, I wasn't in London. I went to London one day. Okay. So whatever that, that expensive area of London is with the shopping, like they, they've, they got sure. shots of him coming out of there. Okay. And then he's in Milan and you're just like, you know, he's wearing, he's, he was wearing prison slides. Now he's wearing Gucci slides and his life changed overnight. And the next thing you know, boom, he's, he's on a yacht. I saw him shirtless on a yacht. Wife is pregnant. He is living his best life. Cause even if that crashes and burns, right. Which yeah. probably, it probably will. His, he's going to steal something at one point. Just to do it, not because he needs the money, yeah, yeah. because he's you know wants to feel like he's still he needs the cred. back home. He needs the cred. He's yeah. gonna get enough shit for Though he'll go to out. somebody's rich ass house and like steal a uh, like a ladle, you know, yeah. just to do it, you know. Um, and that's what's gonna creep back up on him, and then it's like ah oh, shit. But then he's gonna get divorced, and he's gonna get a shit ton of money, and it's like ah oh, all right, cool, he's good, it's good. Um, and that's, that's the, that's the very last piece of advice I can give you. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if you feel like it's all falling apart and you know, there's an heiress out there that you're able to knock up or somebody super rich with a really rich family, obviously don't pull out that night. You know, that's going to take care of you the rest of your life. It works both ways in this situation it really does. Should have taken your own advice. Who? You. I know. I know. Gosh, wouldn't your life be so much easier? You're married super poor. Super, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, and just a mess. You know what I mean? Just a mess. I say that to you sometimes. I'm like, well, it's not boring. No. Right? No. It's not boring. But gosh, <laughs> you really need someone that is like a type A, right? There's all these no, there's all I, these things the type, that the you type A need. is not necessarily true. Or it's just like, eh. Uh, you need someone to, t- you know, take care of stuff and be on the ball and, right. you know, I'm not, <laughs> but again, I'm not boring. No, you're not. You you're know, not. you're not. And you, you get everything done for the most part. Gosh, it takes I feel me like it. Oh, eventually. <laughs> right. Oh, but. <laughs> There's a couple things I do always say with relationships. You can't be bad at the same things and you can't. It's correct. Right. Yeah. And there's a couple things that we're you also both can't be identical. At. You can't be good at the same thing. So I really yeah. think the best thing relationship wise, if you're saying, well, how do you guys work? Is that we're good at different things and correct. we're 
bad at different things. We're bad at some of the same things. Huh. It's very, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's surface stuff. It's surface stuff, but that would be a huge piece of advice, which is like find someone that is good at something that you're not good at and bad at something that you're not bad at. Right. <laughs> right. And, and click that together. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's solid. It's solid japes. Right. I, I like that advice. Uh, cause it's true, you know? Mm-hmm. And then again, all of that is void with money as well. Yeah. So don't, None of that matters if it's a bunch of if there's a bunch of money involved. Be so. as rich as you can, or marry as rich as you can, was is pretty much what we're saying because money really does cure everything. It really does. Um, I got really annoyed. You know that I go on these, I have these moments where I get really annoyed at certain Instagram things or Instagram trends. Yeah, or... you're talking about the the Kim Kardashian thing. Oh no, we'll we'll get to that. We will get to that for sure. Oh, we will. Okay. Right? Don't you want to talk about? For sure. When I saw it, I was like, oh, Jason, you're definitely <laughs> going all in today on that. Well, yeah. So um, the trend, first of all, I was going to write something for our kid's birthday, like a birthday post to him on Instagram. Mm. And then I got all in my head about my new thing is writing posts. To people on Instagram that never see them. That don't exist. Yeah. On Instagram. So like to your grandma. Yeah. To my grandma. Who yeah, da, yeah, da, yeah, da, yeah, or yeah. happy birthday, buddy. You're the. So that that kind of thing is now my new. Putting posts on Instagram to people that you know are never going to see it. That don't have Instagram. That don't have Instagram oh. and all of this. Either they're dead or they're five or whatever. Sure. And then the other thing was I was watching this Facebook. Te- it looked kind of like a TED Talk. You know, these new things that look like TED Talks. Yeah. And the people are giving you some kind of lesson. Yeah. And it was this white lady that is talking about um, how she was just trapped in her life. So this thing of she got married. Because yeah. she felt like she had to, right? Uh-huh. They moved to Italy. Ah. Uh-huh. Lake Cuomo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who's... Uh, she the, was just... The hot inmate is up there. In Cuomo? Yeah. 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 But he's not fucking complaining about it. No. Because he's seen the other side, you <laughs> dumb bitch. So... She's talking like this with the thing. Brittany. Brittany yeah, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. J- Janet Jackson. Rhythm Nation. So... And she's, she's gone to... I may play it. Do you mind if I play it yeah, at the good. end of this? Good. So she's gone. She Lake Cuomo moved to Lake Cuomo. Yeah, yeah. I was riding Vespas. Mm. Wind in my hair. You bet. And I just wasn't happy. And I just felt so lost. Trapped. Trapped. Yeah. Trapped in Lake Cuomo on the Vespa. <laughs> and my husband, he was a great guy. And I just couldn't figure out what it was. What was the answer? So the answer was she just, you know, she wasn't that happy. She wanted to find her own truth and her own voice. What? So well, she left him. And then what? She left him. She came back home. And now she makes decisions for herself. Ah, she said. Great. Now I make, I found my light. Sure. I was trapped in an Italian painting. No. And now no, I found no, no. my light in no. Iowa. Michigan, wherever she's fucking from. Right, where? Rich, white lady. Uh, what was she rich from, though? From the divorce? Or did just she have her being own job? White. Or... No, just always being white and rich. You gotcha. know, that's how, that's how you get so unhappy on a Vespa in L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that you just, you've always been able to do whatever you wanted. Right? Yeah. And now you're in a marriage, right? And you maybe live where he's from or something like this for his job. And you are now going to be a wife. Sure. That doesn't get to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. Right. So get a divorce. But there's no lesson that I need to learn in that. Right. No. The not lesson at all. was you want you weren't you didn't really want to be married. Okay. I'm surprised. Find your light. I'm I'm surprised that guys can't spot this in advance. I it, look. You've dated some shitty people in your life. Um, I've dated shitty girls like that. Where it's just like it was a couple of girls where I was just like, hey man, like. You you seem like you're you're living in another uh, dimension, or or almost like 
putting on a performance for somebody who isn't there. And I'm like, I'm, I'm right here. I don't know what's going on up top. Sure. Above the above the shoulders, you know, above the blades. Mm-hmm. Um, above it's the, the blades. Eat, it's the eat, pray, love thing. It is, but that girl as a guy, I, I was able to spot that of like, oh, well, that's gonna be a fucking nightmare. So I, I usually bounced. Yeah, yeah. But the, the so here's the and here's why I bring this up. The the guy that she was married to. Mm-hmm. Why didn't he see that? He didn't see that she would never be happy no matter what you fucking did for her. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. You can't really spot that. I think, you know, you grow up as a richer white lady, white girl, privileged. Even if you aren't super rich, you're privileged. We know that. And you kind of grow up with like, yeah, so, you know, my parents want me to marry and blah, blah, blah. And maybe you want to just be single and rich and do whatever the fuck you want i don't i don't know i don't know why they get married in the first place but it is the eat pray love so i read that book right right and everyone was oh she's so brave she's so brave and she's just teaching us so much what i got from that book was she was a rich white lady Mm -hmm. she was married to a guy didn't have any kids married to a man she wasn't really that into it Mm -hmm. but um she she was just so you know so unhappy in a normal life in a normal marriage and what do I do? You don't have fucking kids, yeah. leave right? <laughs> so she like had to leave and then she got a, on assignment. So she was paid yeah to go and do all these things. Eat in Italy, write about it, whatever. Eat, eat pray, and love. Eat, pray, and love, and love. Yeah, and I'm gonna learn something from that. You know that's my, but this yeah. is, it just goes with my whole I, thing. Which I is understand, just, and it's like the Kim Kardashian thing of like I'm going to become a criminal defense lawyer. Cool, because you have the money and the time. And I don't. Here's here's one you're thing. You're not going to pass, you dummy. No, because we saw that when I saw that story, I immediately thought of you, and I was just like, "Hey, did you see this?" And you were like, "Yeah, that dumb bitch is never going to pass it." Like. What did she say? She was well, interning th- oh. at a law firm for four years. And what, That's what she's going to do. So in California, in California, you don't actually need to go to law school to become a lawyer. You're kidding. Mm-mm. So you have to pass the bar Ugh. and you have to intern, I think, for a certain amount of time and have so much experience as paralegal. So That's she's going to do that profession to me. for four years. And is she really going to put in the hard work? No. At the law firm, right? Yeah, She's yeah, not yeah. going to be there all the time. She's going to be there in between all of her other shit she needs to do. Yep. Get hours, get things written off. But th- the bar is something that you can't fake, right? No. You can't I, fake it. You can't <clears throat> pay it off. You no. can't pay someone to, pa- you know, to pass you. It would be unbelievably illegal. And if Aunt Becky got caught. Right. Sliding yeah. some cash for college. Let's face it. Kim, Kim K would be caught for sliding some cash to pass the, the bar. Mm. I mean, that's that, that bar exam, you know, one of my best friends from college went, went through it, right? And that is no joke. And he was one of the smartest people I've grown up with, you know? Mm-hmm. And even he was just like, this was fucking brutal. And he didn't know if he passed. And I was like, come on, man, for real? Oh, yeah. And he goes, no, I, I honestly had no idea. And uh, yeah, it, it's, that, that bar exam is no joke. No matter who, who or where you are, like, it's no joke. I don't, the profession to me is, is shitty unless you're actually helping people, you know? Right. But God, the ins and outs of it and everything, like I think law school or whatever, your four year actual apprenticeship, like that's four where years, you learn yeah, everything. Yeah. The bar is testing your knowledge that you've learned, but I guess some crazy savant could go and pass the bar and then you aren't, you still aren't really like. A lawyer in my mind, right? Well, you remember, uh, what was it? Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. At the end, with Tom Hanks is like, hey, man, I still have one question. Oh, yeah. How did you pass the bar exam with no, you know, mm-hmm. no schooling yeah. whatsoever? And, it, you know. like I think he had read law books. I mean, yeah. if you wanted to or commit stuff to but memory or photographic be, memory guy or something. And in, in Catch Me If You Can is a genius. Uh-huh. This is Kim Kardashian. Right. You are not a genius. You are not going to just be able to, to take the bar exam and pass. Go back and watch Catch Me If You Can and then tell me, tell me that you're, you, Kim Kardashian, are just going to be able to, eh, let's do 100 hours in an office and then you Here's know, the real bitch it. of it. She'll probably pass it. No. No. There's no way. 
There's no way. I'll I'll bet you. What do you want to? What, what would you like? Oh shit! Well, the, we what won't be able like? to cash in until what is 2022. it? 2022. 2022. Yeah, but I want to get this on 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 paper <laughs> now, James. I want to get it on paper now. Okay. What do you want? I think she passes. All right. I, I think she doesn't. What okay. Do you, what do you want for the bet? Um, a pony. Twenty 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 two. Yeah, should you wanna... be able to g- grab that real quick. <laughs> a pony by then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a. I'll, I'll get you a pony. No, I don't. So know. we got a pony. I don't know. No, that, that's that's. We'll get oh, sh- Paris. I'll get to go to Paris. Nope. How about that? Nope. You already said no, pony. No, I want. So we're going pony. We're going Shetland. Um, because <laughs> in the. I, oh, I think so our, is that the small yeah, one? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I because nope. I didn't specify. Yeah, so we're going Shetland on that. Um, more for the kids, you know, obviously. Look, no, we got it's young mine. kids. Eh, I'm going to say to the kids, that's mom's that's pony. Yeah, you don't get on mom's get Shetland. Get off my pony. You, you don't get on mom's Shetland, all right? <laughs> that's mom's Shetland. It's me and my feet are dragging. Yeah. I'm riding. <laughs> <laughs> it, they wouldn't be, by the way. The feet would not be dragging. That's in my dream where I'm more than 5'3". But... <sighs> So, yeah, we get the Shetland, I think, because, you know, with the height of our, you know, gates and all that stuff, like it, no one would notice, like the HOAs would notice, obviously, like the, sure, the Homeowners Association sure, would notice. yeah. And we'd still be able to keep a nice, a nice pony, a nice Shetland out there and be like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we got a Shetland pony. And then what do you want? 2022 on that. Um I, I want to not buy the <laughs> you want to so you're you're if you win you don't have to buy the pony I, do, I definitely don't want to buy the pony I guess that makes sense and you don't want anything I no I do I do I do want something um I want one day just one one day I know I'll actually take uh 12 hours I'll take 12 hours of uninterrupted on the beach drunk as I possibly could get um, and then, you know, that's it. Like, that's all I want. And like, I want, I'm going to call you and say, come get me. Okay. So you didn't specify which beach. So we're going to do Myrtle. The whole family. Don't, coming. don't fucking taunt me. Yeah. With a good yeah. Time. The whole family's coming. <laughs> we're going to be partying <laughs> Myrtle side. Myrtle. We're going to be partying boat side. What's the, what's their catchphrase? I live for Myrtle Beach Myrtle days. Myrtle Beach days. Yeah, that's their... With the sun in the sky yeah, yeah. and the sand on the ground and yeah. the turtles in the water and the fish in the sea. I live for Myrtle Beach days. And anybody not from the, the Carolina region, that really is their song. Like, And it plays, they've got this whole jingle that goes with it. I live for Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, Beach days. days. And you show up and it's like. Nothing like that. No, there's a woman smoking meth in the parking lot. Mesh. You, you, a it hot is, pink mesh. It is mandatory that you do two, sh- two kamikaze shots before you walk into every single bar down in Myrtle. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and by the way, you're getting cut somewhere. Either via knife or glass. Like you're getting Oh, cut. yeah, yeah. Something's going to cut you either on, yeah. the, on the, the sand itself. Right. Or. Foot. Parking lot. Yeah, someone uh-huh. is going to stab you in the Foot, parking lot. parking lot. Bars. Restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> a seat you sit in. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I could see you getting like the last two pounds of like endless crab legs, mm-hmm. you know, and then somebody coming over and just stab, like they order crab legs right after you and then they stab you in the leg with a butter knife. Because I got the last of the crab. Yeah, the last two Stuff pounds. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where well, you tip the waitress an extra fivesies and you say, hey. I know I'm only supposed to get like a half pound at a time. I want two pounds because I, I think like I think those are going to run out soon. Go get me those two pounds, and this 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 Lincoln is yours. And then they go back and get it and bring it out to your table, and you're like, oh, all right, cool. And then somebody else is like, I'll take the crab legs. Me and my fam. Sorry, so we're all out. And then you just see this tray full yeah. of. And then the guy comes over the butter knife. No, this was my family vacation. I saved up. You can get fucked. Homeboy, you know, like paper towel in the shirt, uh, tucked. Yeah, yeah, yep. That's why I'm going on the casino boat. Ah, you know that old, big fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go on the casino boat. That's where I'm gonna be. Where Kids you have are to gonna spend be... eight hours. Yes. And there's only alcohol, no food. So you yes. have nothing to do but gamble and gamble or drink. and drink well, well liquor that is going to be double priced. Right? Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's. That's gonna be measies. You'll be on the <laughs> you'll be on the beach, 
And then the kids will be. I'll take it. Where are they? Where, yeah, where are you? They'll where be are at you? the pirate show with the nanny. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, look, uh, I'm, I'm down for all of it. I'll take any beach I can get. I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. And then that. we all go to medieval times that night and party. Party. Um, I, get a, I, get a, I get a monster question to ask you here. Um, I love it because you were right the other day, I think. People, people came at me for the, the Roswell crash of like, uh, hey, man, this might be Russia, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I actually subscribe to that theory a little more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's one where, you know, I'm going to really test your mind on here, Javes. Okay. And I know what's going to happen. You're going to say, oh, <laughs> come on. Come oh, on. Like I'm that predictable. Go ahead. You don't know me like that. <laughs> Are we living in a simulation? Oh a- an God. MIT scientist <laughs> says it's more likely than not. Mm-hmm. Um, I look, cool. I've brought this up a few times. This is a sim world. Uh, I want to say that if it is, by the way, thank you for picking my children and, and my family. Like you, you picked out a good wife and kids, uh-huh. whoever's run, controlling me or whatever. Right. In the sim oh, you world. think someone else is controlling? Maybe it could be possible. Maybe not. I don't know. But if we are, I want to thanks. I want to give a shout out for, for having some beautiful peeps around me. You know, oh, cool. I want to thank thank you for what whatever I look like. Sure, like, congratulations! I've been happy with this this sure. uh, this face for a while. Yeah, it's done you well. Yeah, so I want to I want to say thanks for that. But mm-hmm. um, is it weird that it's oddly more comforting to me that if we are? No. <laughs> is it weird for you um, that it's more comforting? Maybe that makes sense. I mean, that makes sense for you. For me, there's for me. It's I not. just watch like we were watching the news last night, right? When I came back. And there was like endless story of like tragedy, 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 and then a worse tragedy. ABC. It was David Muir. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. Just like boom, boom, like hammering us. Yeah, and like, then still on the Trump thing with the we brother. We are weeks and months past that thing, like the the Russia thing. Oh, they aren't. Jesus Christ, bro! I, I but I used to think think like even David Muir. I was like maybe he's above it. No, he's not. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. No. We're beyond it now. It's it's over. Let's it's time to move on to the, the next election here. Right. Uh, we've been hammering this for goddamn near three years now. Um, we're good on all of that. Sure. When I saw all these tragedies, though, I was like, man, it would be great if this was a sim world right now. Um, because it, it was that just, would make you feel better. Yeah. yeah. What was it? A, a, the first story was a bus that crashed into a semi no, a cra- uh, I'm sorry, a semi mm-hmm. crashed, crashed into, into a, a car bus. that crashed into a school bus full of children. Mm-hmm. And I was like, The lady fuck. in the car. The lady in the car in between is dead. Dead. Children hurt, bus driver. So the whatever, children in like, the bus Ugh, have to God. deal with yes. for their life being on the bus and that killed killing this the woman. lady. And, and then they had to go it. to the hospital seeing it. Because the way that the, the, yeah. that the cars lined up in this weird configuration. The children, the bus was faced with the car, so they had no choice but to look at this fucking woman who got mm. crushed to death. Um, then so that, after that. Yeah. Then after that, we have the, that, that explosion in uh, Durham. Mm-hmm. Gas explosion. Mm-hmm. Where it was just like, you know, what's Minding 16? your own business. Boom. Your whole place just. <laughs> yeah. Goes up in a. Goes up in. In a gas flames. leak. Literally in a gas leak. And, it, and like, it's an explosion. It's not like a little fire exactly. starts. Exactly. Yeah. And you're like, man, one person dead, 17 critical or whatever it was. And I was just like, oh, God. Well, the, and the one thing I thought. Sim world is all I kept thinking. The Please, one thing is world. that I thought was like, we're looking at, you know, space, oh, like the, studio stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then, you know, because it was office. I don't think it was home that that blew up. But you're like, fucking hey. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. your I whole know, business is in there or whatever. I know. Um, and then right after that was a principal that underwent bone marrow surgery to help a student yeah. or a friend yeah. or something. No, no, it, 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 no, not a friend, not a student. Oh, a stranger. A stranger. Not, a, not even a, a student of his own Died. school that he was a principal at. Died just in a, surgery. A ch- a, you know, a young child who just needed this bone marrow and he's like, I'll volunteer and then died in surgery because he had complications from the surgery with the bone marrow. And I was like, I, I mean, whew. and by the way, and then after that, later on that night, the D- Dwayne Wade commercial dropped for Budweiser. I mean, both of us. And yeah. I'm, look, I'm a dude, and I have no problem admitting this. I'm not even. I'm not even going to pretend of like a, like the you know everybody uses that line. I'm not crying. You're crying. No, I was just emotionally. Cr- I mean, 
really oh, yeah. crying. Sniffle. Yeah. Not more than that. It was full tears. Mm-hmm. Full tears coming down my face for that Dwayne Wade commercial. Um, if you haven't seen the Dwayne Wade Budweiser commercial, I don't even care if you're a fan of basketball. It doesn't, it doesn't really have anything to do with basketball. Uh-uh. Um, it's just about being a good person in life. And man, Full tears and a reminder that you are more than what you do. Yes. So that's what I always try and hammer in. Right. Is like it doesn't matter what you're doing for your job. You get up, you do it, you come back. It's what you do outside of that that's going to make you. Well, I. I, Yes and no for me. We get so many emails from this show and Drinking Bros podcast of, of, you know, look. 5.2 5.2 million listeners on Drinking Bros, 1.6 on this show. We get so many emails of like, hey, you got us through the day. I feel bad. if, I, Like I feel genuinely shitty the rest of the day if we have a bad show. Because I, I think that I fucked up somebody's day somewhere. For real. And so I think with this job, even though it, it's fun and it's awesome and I get to work with you and it's great. I, I like, I'd like to have good shows, man. Like I know. The, no, I'm, no, I'm no. I'm just saying, but this show, what we do. Yeah. Um, I love that it's important to people, but you, what I always say to, you know, the listeners or I have to say to myself sometimes is it doesn't have to be your work, what you do for work, what you do for money doesn't have to be who you are. So it doesn't, Correct, you know, yeah. if you have yeah. to do this job to take care yep. of your family, it's the taking care of your family part that will make you great, that will make you a hero to them and to people that remember you, right? Right. So this, you know, long commutes and doing these jobs that, again, are not your passion, are not your dream. Like, that's my whole thing, is like, don't worry about your actual job that maybe you have to do being your passion, yeah, making you fulfilled and happy every day, because it may not. But it's what that job affords you and what you do with it. Yeah. Whether it's taking care of a family, taking care of a family member, taking care of yourself, you know, doing whatever it may be. That's the thing that is important. Right. Uh, so whatever the reason was that I was saying that. No, because, I, look, we, we, uh, we got to, I actually, though, I want to bring up something that, that you just said, because it, it just reminded me of, again, I know I say this all the time when we get tons of messages, but we do. They're hard to answer because we, we get so many, but I try, I try, at least try. Yeah. A listener wrote me and said, we, you did an episode about saying, don't live your fucking dream because mm-hmm. sometimes you can't because you've got to pay for bills and all that shit mm-hmm. and don't, you know, I think it was the Mad Marge episode actually. Probably. The DJ Mad Marge. And you went off on a rant on it and somebody wrote into the show and said, hey, I really, and it was a guy who was like, I really loved what Jesse said because- I, I think he may have wrote me too. Damn. Yeah, but I'll anyways, shout you out in the next show, buddy. Yeah. I, I don't think he wants to be shouted out for this oh, for oh, real. Sorry, but sorry, um, uh, he said he's like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm painting houses, you know, mm-hmm. for a living right now. There's some other things that I thought about doing, but he's like, I've got a family and I make great money right now. And just hearing that was like, you know, because so, some other friends of his, I guess, were were talking shit about what he did or whatever. And he's just like, dude, I'm making great money for my family and keeping them alive and fed and all that stuff. He's like. Fuck you guys. And after you listen to your, your rant on that show, mm-hmm. he was just like, man, that struck me at the right time at the right place. And he nice. was just like, dude, she was right. I can't just give all this up when you have a family and all that stuff. Like Selfish, that's, it's unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. It's unrealistic. And, Cause and, there's, there's even things that I want to do. And I'm sure you do too, that we can't outside of, you know, this and, and everything else we do in life where it's just like, eh, so, some things have got to be on the back burner. I, I just be an asshole. What helps me is like I I listen to these either documentaries, these sports documentaries and these successful people talking about their parents, talking mm-hmm. about their family, talking about the people that they remember. If you say who inspired you the most, who is it that blah, blah, blah. It's not some famous person or someone that followed their dreams or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the mom or dad or brother or grandpa that was just there for them, whether it's like cooking, you know, cooking for them or always being there, always being positive. Uh, You know, there's something like, like with my dad, it would be like, he, he kept the same house, the same job. Did he love it every day? No, but he would get up, do the job to take care of his family. 
And there was lots of things he wanted to do. He talks about it all the time. He's still alive. But, you know, I want to travel here. I would love to do this. I would love to do that. But there was something for me so, I don't know, inspiring. And when, when you say, who are the people that inspire you? Who are the people that you remember and why? It's mostly just someone that was stable and was there. Right. And did the right thing for their family. Those are the heroes. So anyways, wh- whatever to say, but yeah, um, this person that, you know, is making good money for their family and it is about just taking pride in whatever it is you do. If you work at Wendy's, your, your suit is, you know, your, your uniform's <clears throat> clean, yeah. it's pressed, you yeah. show up on time, you show up with a smile on your face. Like that to me is, I mean, I, I love that. Yeah, I, I I'm the same I way. I'm like, I find like the the happiest or the most grateful times in my day are when I meet people who are passionate or great at their jobs, no matter what they are. Mm-hmm. Where you're just like, all right, cool, you're right at McDonald's or whatever. Like, and I, you get plucked from that shit sometimes, man. If you, you show you, up, if you've got a good attitude, I think you do more often than not. I just don't think it's talked about that much. And right, I mean, dude. It, it, in Hollywood, I like all the crew members and stuff, all the low level people who are working out there who never get any name recognition, who are great, always get picked off, man, because they're positive and they've, they, they work hard and they've got a, I, I don't, I can't remember, you know, there's maybe two or three that I'm like, man, they still haven't made it yet, but that's about it. You know, like, um, acting is a whole nother fucking shit wagon, mm-hmm. but, uh, for, for a job where you have to, you know, physically work hard and do things. Um, I, I, yes, I, I believe in that a hundred percent. So like, for example, a guy lost like a job at my one at our house, right? We're mm-hmm. just getting a little bit of work done in Wilmington. Good luck. Well, it was from the hurricane. We should tell. Well, yeah. I, like there's still backup from the hurricane. Back up, but shit. we, you know, it we're having carpets. family come carpets, in. Yeah. We need to do it. So whatever we got to do it. Carpets were placed for the hurricane is what it was. And yeah. So got, you know, talk to this guy the day we talked at yeah. the carpet place. It's like, yeah, I could be there tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Like nobody's saying be there tomorrow on the card. Better attitude. Better. That's his card. <laughs> better attitude. Like good work done with good attitude. I go, cool, man. Cool. And he's ready to come tomorrow. Awesome. Just text me. Text me your information. Yep. Text him. Got nothing. Like I was like, and just. Let me know you got this. This is my address. This is da-da-da. We'll see you tomorrow for the uh, measurements. Nothing back. Okay, that's fine. You know, you you got it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Next day, nothing. Text him again. Just making sure you got my text because it was in green. Stop being poor. Um, So it was was in green. So you don't know. I mean, I guess it went through, but did it. Yeah. And... Then I called like an hour after, still didn't get a text. I'm like, I give him an hour. I called, hey, uh, who is this? Like this, this exact tone, complete, yeah. complete change. Great attitude. Great, better work done with better attitude. <laughs> so yeah, the next day, complete 180. Yeah. Hey, who? Oh man, sorry. I just get so many texts. I can't even. Oh, oh, you can't even. Okay, um, and I was so taken aback, right? Because I, I got the card in my hand. Good attitude. So I'm, is this the same guy? Like yeah. what? No, it wasn't the same guy. It was next day guy. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, it was yeah. I got the job and now I'm on the job. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So when you're getting it, he's good attitude and now he's on the job. Fired. Fired, basically. Yeah. But um, yeah, Fired I mean, him. I... I know I said I could get to it today, but I am just, I am slammed, slammed. So I don't know, uh, (sighs) that kind of thing Yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow. And I'm still nice. I'm still nice because I know I'm firing him. Very non-confrontational. Um, so still nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I could just give you the code. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, so that should work. Bye. Um, so then I fired him over text after that Yeah, and he never got back to me with the fired text because he's just so busy. busy, Better pizza, better ingredients, Papa John's. God, it was like, 
fuck. He had he had gotten the job in so, his mind. He had gotten the job. I would love to see his fucking. So face. The, the the gist of this is you work hard, you get the job. A guy a guy rolled in. And listen, boom. even if he had a good attitude had and was like, day. "Hey, I'm so sorry. I I'm just trying to get back to text." Yeah. Um. But he's a dick. He was a dick, huh? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I get a lot of text. And that's exactly what he said. So it's. It's it's all of these things, right? Right. Taking pride. Yes. Taking pride in what you do, no matter what it is. So he lost the job. A guy that I've worked with before who has a great attitude, who, you know, tr- treats his job with respect, keeps things tidy. Right. Puts the booty on his foot yeah, when yeah, he yeah, comes yeah, in yeah, yeah. as to not mess up your floor. Things like this. I just go, okay, well, he's going to be a little bit more, but I called him and I'll give him any other job. Yeah. He's Jesus, a hard worker. If, if I could, if I could hire him for production, I would, well, right? Jesus is a carpenter. So, you right. know, right. Uh, he was a carpenter. If we could hire Jesus, it'd be great. He's doing our carpet though, isn't he? I think so. I think, Jesus? He, yeah, I think his name is Jesus actually. It is. Yeah. No, it's not. I think it is. Yeah. Dead serious. Uh, not the... The, not the other carpenter, obviously upstairs. Not the sure. not the carpenter upstairs. It's the it's you know not Christ. It's obviously. Anyways, uh, I would Jesus. love to say his name and his company, but well, I'm not gonna do that. Don't do that. I'm not gonna do that because I don't work like that. Um, but I will put a picture of his card on my Instagram. <laughs> no, don't do that. I'm joking. <laughs> Please, oh my God, I never do shit like that. Let's the get most I will do is what I've just done. To the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we, Jabes? We shall. Uh, this one's going out to uh, Carl Schwarz Child. That's a weird name. Couldn't be right. That can't be how he Probably you... not. Probably not. Probably not. Usually not. Uh, 1916. He found the modern solution of uh, general relativity that would characterize a black hole. The reason why that's important is yesterday um, we got the first picture of the black hole. Man, that's fucking wild. Did you see it? Uh, no. No, he didn't. So everything that I've been talking about on the show is actually coming true in real life. And you just, you missed that one, huh? With the black hole. What do you mean everything you've been talking on the tr- on the show? So they've never been able to find this. They've never been able to get a picture of it. It is, uh, what did they say? I, I think they said on the news it was 67 billion, a uh, picture seven, 67 billion suns in a row. That, yes. That's how hot it is. And that's what it is. And it's mm-hmm. a fucking vortex that sucks everything in. Somebody developed cameras, man, that took, you know, fucking years to get out in, in space and they, they finally, for the first time ever, have a picture of a black hole. When I saw this, and I thought about the sim world and all that other shit, like, starting to make more sense. What's in, that, what's in the black hole now? Because, I look, you hear all this shit. I'm one of these people, if I don't see a picture of it, like, yeah, is it really, is it real? Did it really mm-hmm. happen? Like, I want to see some evidence of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, They just dug up, you know, everybody's been talking about mankind. It's been around for, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. No proof. Yesterday, they found uh, a a new human species 50,000 years ago. So what does that mean about all modern science and fucking history that we've learned? It's all bullshit, I think. But anyways, they found teeth. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, oh, man, we we heard about this thing and we found the thing. Found teeth of a human from 50,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So humans were walking around as well, right? Yeah. So now you think back to all the other bullshit we've learned and gotten taught or whatever. It's like, eh, it wasn't real. Right. They didn't, they didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. You got to start somewhere, right? You got you to put a, a, a benchmark somewhere and be like, all right, great. Now we're going to go forward from here. Right. Incorrect. Black hole thing, right? Take sure. a picture of this thing. And I'm like, oh, boy. I, that just sounded too convenient for things because it would, would be really hard to wrap your head around what – what a black hole is and then what happens once you're sucked into it. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously if it's 67 billion suns, you're going to burn up or whatever it is. But what if it's possible not to, and then go into this black hole, what's in it? Cause it's sucking everything into it, right? Mm-hmm. Within its path. What else is in the black hole? Could it be another dimension, another world, Jabes? <laughs> it's the solar system. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that picture, man, I was like, ooh, boy. It wasn't what I thought. Yeah. 
It was, uh, I don't know. It seemed like uh, something like the Rock movie. And I was just like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like where there's like a, a hole in the sky and the, the, the apocalypse is coming and it's this thing. And you're sure. like, a, like, like, like a Marvel movie or something where you're yeah. like, oh, this is sucking all the people up through the, the sky. And you're like, oh, shit. Really does look like that, huh? Wow. That's creepy. Hmm. Wonder what else is in there. Sure. And that could take up a lot of brain space to think about that, right? Good. Yeah. Why I need to unload with a little Hiawaska. Wow, you're d- a lot of different. No, just a lot wanna, of different things are happening right now. Okay, just so, want to clear up some some uh, some brain space, some some hard drive. You know, want to clear out some hard drive there. So I got a terabyte. If you do the ayahuasca, can we? Can you clear out all the the, <laughs> the idea of the part of your brain that thinks about this fucking dumb shit no. that you can't do anything no, about? It, well, or maybe it'll send me to the other side. Because right now I'm on the fence, right? It'll send you to the other it'll side? It'll send me to the other oh side of God. the fence where I'm like, all right, cool, Everything man. before revolutionary figure cool. was fine. Now we're going into a... Not at all. Not at all, Japes. Because with that... I can't believe there's like zero curiosity out of you. That's what, I, what? I can't believe. Of the black hole. Somebody else, thing. somebody else wrote in on, on the Roswell crash episode and they said, I would like to see Jesse be forced to do a full two hour, like Rogan. You don't rabbit hole conspiracy you don't. episode. And I, I said, I, I, that would probably be the worst show you ever listened to. Yeah. Because it would be a lot of me like, well, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot of like, this is all a sim world and, uh, you know, a lot of black holes sucking us in. I'm like, well, you know, for now, it's cool. So it'd be a lot of that. And you, right. you don't, you don't want to hear it. You no. don't want to hear it because I, again, shut down you do. You when do. there is too much information, when there are too many questions that you will never have the answer to. Yeah. That's when I shut down. It is. No, it's, it's, that's true. It's true. I have way too many things to focus on that I actually need I to it. find the answer to. No, I get it, James. I get it. Um, and that's just how the sim people, that's how the, the people made me in this sim world. I wonder, right? I wonder they, if, they made me just focused on, what, singularly focused. I'm going to have to do some more examination on this. I wonder if there's a, a segment of, of people out there, like the flat earthers who believe in the sim world and they get together and talk about it. I'm sure they do, and you guys can have a ball. If so, all I'd, of you. I'd love to get a hold of uh, one of the, the chapter members or charter, you know, one of the charter members. I don't know what they call it, chapter charter, but mm-hmm. either way, I want one. I want one on the show. Gosh, I'd love you. I'd Just love to talk for about you the to sim world. Devote I, some time to that group. Rogan's got a bunch of scientists on his shit. Yeah. I saw Theo Vaughn had, uh, had one on too. Like, mm-hmm. uh, but I think his doctor, was about, yeah, yeah. Uh, his is a doctor, but I, I would like to get into one of those episodes one day. I, I, I would love to see that scientist next to you explaining all of this. Like this, uh, this MIT scientist, right? Mm-hmm. He was talking about the sim world. I wonder if I could just fucking hit him up. Like, am I that famous that I can get him, hit him up maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, just hit him up and be like, hey man, can I just do a phone interview with you? Yeah, I'm sure. Phoner. Uh, be great don't it? call it that but i think you probably could yeah that'd be great yeah i'm gonna save his shit because uh i think if i ever wanted to torture you like like a, a in a in a in a different bet besides mm-hmm. our shetland pony bet sure it would be to make you sit next to a scientist who believes in a sim world and do a full three-hour podcast and yeah. just you're stuck next to him you can't go anywhere you know both of you guys are on camera and there's no cutaways and so you can't even like roll your eyes or do anything. Right. That would be and all I'm probably thinking, your hell on earth. Yeah. All I'm thinking the whole time is like, I need to get balloons for the party. For this party. <laughs> I have to edit this and then I need to pick this person up, head to the office. That's all I'm thinking about while he's talking about this fucking stupid idea of us being in a sim world. Ah, where none of us I love it. Can ever even figure out or we know. can. We can. You know, you know what the answer is? Ayahuasca, so you think maybe, maybe your little it is. brain or your little brain will make you think that you figured it all I'm out. I'm talking DMT. It's dynamite. DM. No, you won't even entertain me on the DMT. <laughs> Got cool. For Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>